Hey, good day. Welcome to another episode of Union Power. I'm your host, Robert Bob TV Brown today. And today I'm going to talk about a few things that's going on. And the purpose of this show is to reach out to the community and encourage them to back up the workforce community, which most of us are a part of, and to push our politicians, push our leaders to support working people, to support unions. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is um, we're having an issue in airports dealing with travel. The average worker at the airport are food service workers and retail. It's not baggage claim. It's not security, food service and retail. Even when you have companies that are contracted by major airlines, they don't offer their workers what the major airlines offer their workers. And that is by design because the airline workers don't want to be paying extra money. They want to off ship, I mean, off outsource jobs that they don't have to pay benefits for. They don't have to pay a decent wage for. That's up to the contracted companies, which is horrible. In the state of New York or the city of New York need to put a lockdown on allowing these independent contractors or these contractors in general to come in and hire workers, but not give them decent pay, decent health care and all that to try to give them the reason to skate it. Most of them only going to hire people part time by design. Why? Because if you're working part time, you can't demand health care. You can't demand vacation time. You can't demand all these things. All of this stuff is by design. And how is all gonna, how is that going to change? It take people like you and me coming together as a collective to demand our politicians to demand these companies, you really have to put the heat on these companies. I mean, you have to blast. I mean, there's many ways you can put the heat on. You can go on a Twitter site and blast them out, Facebook or whatever, and blast them out. Shoot a video. If I was a work, well, if I was a parent of a worker or related to a worker who worked there, I would talk about that company like a dog because they can't do nothing against me. I wouldn't advise a worker to do that because a lot of these companies don't have a union. And in the state of New York, you're at will employee. They can fire you just for, you know, passing gas and looking at them the wrong way. So I want to suggest that. But pressure has to be put on these companies. The airlines need to put pressure on these contract companies. Unions, Port Authority, City of New York, state or whatever city or state you're in across the country. Most of these people work part time. And this brings me to this point. A lot of these workers, especially here in New York, especially at JFK, they work part time. They work for a crappy contracted company that's barely paying them $15.60 an hour. They probably put in four hours a day and they probably putting in, if they're lucky, four or five days a week. <clears throat> they only work three hours a day and you got to do what you got to do. But it's not fair to them because they can't get any benefits in the state. They work in allows that now here in New York, we've done something different. We have paid sick leave where well, it doesn't matter part time, full time or not. You get five days, five paid days. Another initial that is passed. That is law. Problem is companies want to make their workers take their vacation time out of their sick time, which the law need to be changed. Mayor um, de Blasio allowed companies to use their five, six days as an open source. In other words, if I just, if I need to take a vacation, I could take a couple of days out of my sick days. Me personally, if it was up to me, all you have to do is call out sick. It's none of my business what you do with your days. And in the, in the law, it does require that some some cases it does require if it go two, three days, three days, you have to provide proof. But to f allow companies to freely tell you, you I don't need to give you vacation. You got five sick days. If you want to take a vacation, take it out of your sick days. Or if you need to call out, use your sick days. They don't want to provide call out days, which is good to have, but you got to be strategic with it. Or they don't want to offer vacation time. And 
in some cases, they're not obligated to because the law is so flexible that if you work part time, you they, they're not off, uh, obligated to give you vacation time. Is that fair to a worker? Another thing is these people working four to five hours a week, three to at most five days a, a week. They have to travel. A lot of them can't afford a car. A lot of them can't afford gas in the car. A lot of them take public transportation. And already you're spending 32 or 120 some dollars a month for public transportation. But then when you get to the airport, you have to pay $7 going in, $7 coming out. So imagine that $15 a day average just to go to work in the airport. Not talking about your regular Metro card. I'm talking about just to get in the airport. Now here's what's not fair. The people who make decent money, good job, work for the airlines, work for Port Authority, work for TSA. They have a badge that they can just show and walk right through and don't pay anything. It don't come out of your pocket. Now, they do have an unlimited card service where you pay $40 a month and you can go back and forth as much as you want. Don't take lunch, though, because if you take lunch, you go out the airport and go pick, get your lunch and come back. You're going to have to wait a certain amount of time to get back in. That's OK. But that's still a worker should not have to pay to come on the work site. And that's what this is. I'm paying to come on the work site. Port Authority don't pay. TSA don't pay. Port Authority police don't pay. Customs don't pay. Why I got to pay? I barely can pay that. I work at Dunkin' Donuts. Two for five dollars croissant. I, I, I don't get that many hours. I don't make that much money. I don't have any benefits. And you got the nurse to make me come out of my pocket to pay to get into work. That is not fair. Moving right along, that is something in the future, something that need to be worked on, something that need to be legislated. Here's the point I want to get to. A lot of the workers, they get sick on the job. And by New York City being an international city, the hub of the world, we get more people from various countries coming into this city than any city. People oftentimes coming in sick. And you don't know what they have when they come off the plane. And these workers are being exposed to that sickness, especially the baggage workers who got to pick up their bags. They're not be even being provided gloves. They're not provided spray, uh, disinfectant. They're not being provided anything. And then you got those who do wheelchairs. And some people are immobile. They can't move out of chairs. And oftentimes they go right there in that chair. Yet their company that they work for don't provide them with any sanitation material to clean the chair, clean their hands or whatever. And oftentimes they go home to their kids or to their family from a sickness that they got from some person from another country. <laughs> and, you know, like I said, you're going to get sick, but at least prepare them with the tools just in case they do get sick where they can get checked out, find out what it is and get it cleared. New York City doesn't have that. New Jersey don't have it. The most expensive airports in the freaking world don't have that available. So right now, unions, workers, legislators are promoting what they call the Healthy Terminal Act. And the Healthy Terminal Act is designed to um, make sure everybody that's working at the airport get the medical needs, get the medical um, opportunity they need just in case they get sick at work. You realize how hard it is for a worker to fight for workman comp from their job? You realize how hard it is for a worker to get the proper time they need to recuperate from a sickness because the boss is pushing them to come back to work? That's that's a lot. What 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 I've seen personally with people on the job site that I've worked with, their bosses make them go to a uh, a nurse and a doctor hired by the airlines and that nurse and doctor look at them and tell them hey all right you checked out you okay take this come back in a day or two and we just buy that because that's the only health care we got when in reality if you went to another doctor they probably say dude you got a serious virus 
that can transmit to other people. You need to stay your butt home five days and take this medication. Don't worry about paying for it. It's covered under your plan. No, these people, they already coming out of their pocket paying for the Metro card. They're coming out of pocket going to work. They barely working 40 hours. Some at most working 30 hours. I mean, it's just a headache for the regular average working person. One of the biggest things we believe that can really help them financially is eliminate the medical costs. That way they can put some of their money in the pocket. To me, I say eliminate that cost of them going to work at the air train. They should not have to pay an air train fee. I got too many people that go that does, doesn't go into Jamaica, doesn't go into Howard Beach. They go into Leffers, but they have to catch a bus from the train station to Leffers, which is an extra almost 30 to 45 minutes. That is not fair to them. So there need to be some changes dealing with workers getting to work at the work site. No worker, none, nobody should be paying to come through Port Authority gate to get to their job. That is a money scheme, that are one of the biggest racketeering schemes that Port Authority in the city of New York has ever came up with. I might catch some heat for this, but it is. You sitting up here making $14 a day to $40 a month off working people who work at the airport. They're not coming to visit New York, have a good time and go back. Th that I understand. These are working people. Some of them doing double shift. They go home, pick up their kids, take the kids to grandma, come back, got to pay another $7. Nobody working should be paying that at any airport paying to get on a transportation uh, vehicle to go from one terminal to the other. Nobody should be able to do that. That should never be done. That is wrong. You eliminate that. <coughs> That'll be more money in the pocket of those workers there. Eliminate the health care costs for workers at the airport, that will be more money in their pocket. We already have a law in the state of New York, mainly in the city of New York, about um, ULP law, the, universe, um, the uniform law. By law, every company that provides you with a uniform is supposed to be paying you to get their uniform clean, at least to get it washed and pressed. But we got jack leg companies don't wanna do that like Yulin of America. You realize how much money that is? I've seen parents have to take their kids' diapers money to get their uniform clean to go to work. And that, they don't supposed to be doing that. That is the company's job to provide a stipend for them every week to get their uniforms clean. Yet, if their uniforms are not clean, they get written up. They get chewed out. Mother, you supposed to be paying this. Why are you chewing me out? Why don't you just take my uniform and you clean it? See, back in the day, they just take your uniforms, put it on a truck, take to some company, and they come back pressed, and you pick up your uniform. Those SOBs don't even want to do that. They expect you to do that as a worker, knowing you work part-time, going to school full-time or whatever. God, it's doggone shame you got someone working part-time. They got to strip at nighttime. <laughs> it's, it's not fair. It's just not fair. So um, unions all across the airport, TWU, SEIU, uh, you got the Teamsters Union, various unions are coming together to push the Healthy Terminal Act. And we need the public to back them up whenever they have a rally, whenever they have a march, whenever they have a demonstration. We want the public there. See, I'm, I'm, I'm organized at heart. It does, don't matter where I am, who I am working for, whenever there's some kind of labor activity going, I'll be there. I would call, I would call, take a sick day just to be there. Or I take a vacation that just to be there because I know how unity will send a bigger message than, you know, I ain't got time. Uh, no, I, I, I got to make time. Because change change is change when you be that change. Stop looking at other people. You got to be the change. You got to make a decision. Like the other day, you know, I went out there to the airport and I marched for this universal pay 
on Martin Luther King. Well, it wasn't Martin Luther King Day, but it was the MLK because we knew MLK was all about universal health care as he was about universal income, basic income. He believed every American should be able to get a certain amount of month, um, um, money every month to take care of their most pressing needs, yet still work. That was just extra to take care of like medical and things like that. It's important that these workers have this because they got to deal with different sicknesses and disease. You don't know, somebody get off the wheelchair and they feet little feces on the wheelchair and you got to clean that up and and, and, and or, or they urinate on the wheelchair, you got to clean it up. People call for whatever is on the um, baggages, on the baggage. You don't know what's on the baggage when they come in. Some people don't get their baggage wrapped up because they people have to pay extra money for that. So for the love of the workers, man, take care of your workers. The most valuable commodity at any company, at any corporation, is not the customer. It's the worker. Because if you don't have no workers, you don't have no customers. Because your butt ain't leaving your ivory tower to go handle those customers. It's your workers that's between you and those customers. Bad enough, you get major profits. You are in record profits this year and you don't share with your workers. You are not going to be able to really defend them if they get sick. Now, currently we got five sick days. If it wasn't for organizers like me, you, city legislators, politicians, uh, churches coming together to demand paid sick leave, you think these companies would have gave you sick leave? 90% of the companies would not give you sick leave, especially paid sick leave. They are forced to if they're gonna do business in New York. Every major city should be doing something like that. You're gonna do business in this city, you're gonna do this. You're gonna take care of your workers, you're not gonna stay, especially when you're from another state, another city, or another freaking country, you're gonna come down here and you're gonna crap on the workers here? Shame on you. And vice versa, you're gonna go down to another country and you're gonna treat them that, that country workers like crap and you just going to profit off them and not give them some of the profit shame on you so the city is pushing this they, we already got the five sick days to me I think it need to be seven but right now we got five hopefully Bill de Blasio will step it up and add two more days on that right now they're pushing 10 PTO days personal time off now, what they have to do and what we have to push them to do is to make sure that this is separate from vacation and separate from sick time. And if any company are violating the law concerning that, they need to be penalized. And if they get penalized three times, their butt will lose the contract and they have to get out of the city. So you better be glad I'm not the mayor. I wouldn't want to be anyway. I got my own... You know, I got so much dirt on me, man. Boy, I'd be out of it. Out of, <laughs> I'm not even going to waste my time running, man. I got major dirt. <laughs> I'm, I used to be a dirty dude in the back in the past. So, you know, I, I I mean, I had a bad past, man. I was I was something else. You know, yeah, I smoke, I smoke weed. You, <laughs> I did all that stuff. Uh, therefore, if you're basing a politician on that, you know, and ran women, you name it. So... <laughs> You know, but God changed me. God changed me. He saved me. <clears throat> so what we need is the public to really get behind this Healthy Terminal Act. We need you. It doesn't matter what country, what city you're in, what state you're in. We need you to call New York Port Authority and apply the pressure on New York Port Authority. We need you to apply the pressure on every politician in New York, especially in Queens. We need you to put the pressure on Governor Cuomo and we need you to put the pressure on Bill de Blasio. We need you to call Chuck Schumer. We need you to call Alexandra Cortez and any other politicians in New York City, New York State, or uh, in the state legislature or in um, House and Senate for um, the United States. This is where you come in. Get on their Twitter. Hit their inbox. Get on the phone. 
talk talk to them. Now, you might not talk to them, but you'll talk to one of their intake workers and tell them that you support the Healthy Terminal Act and that any politician who will not support it, they can forget my vote this year. See, this is how you put the t tight squeeze. See, the problem is these punk politicians haven't had any tight squeeze on them. We just vote them because we're scared of this person and we don't vote for them because we're scared that, you know, I mean, it's okay to be me. I don't vote on fear. But if you want to get somebody out for various reasons, you don't like them, you can't stand them, that's good. That's your own motive. But at least put more substance behind that. I'm not going to just put you in the office and you're not going to do nothing while you're there. I'm not going to do it. Your butt going to go out there and work for my vote. What's the last time Chuck Schumer did anything? You know Chuck Schumer fast-tracked Trump's judges? You know Chuck Schumer went ahead and helped um, Trump get more money for the military? I can go on and on and on. See, <laughs> what does this stuff have to do with you, though? So you got to call your politician. You got to get your pastors, your leaders behind this effort. But more importantly, you have to be behind this effort. You. You the one have to call your local community board, city council, borough president, you name it. Any politician, you got to call them. Any religious leader, you need to talk to them. You see your pastor, you go to them and ask them about it. Are you going to support this healthy terminal act? And explain to them. Give them information on the Health Eternal Act. But more important, you support it. Every union should be supporting that Health Eternal Act. Even whether it's got something to do with what you currently do, I understand every union has its own mission. It has its own campaign. It has its own, own target. But at the end of the day, it's still about working people. And a working person is a working person. Whether they're part of your union, not part of the, your union, they're you need to support them. And how do you expect another union campaign? To me, y'all should be watching each other back, tip for tat. You, you so supported me on mine. I'm going to be out there for yours. Thank you very much. I got you. What you got going on? All right, we'll be there. 100 strong, 10,000 strong. One of the things I saw about SEIU, and I think this was the vision of Hector Figueroa, is that there is no separate union fight. There is no separate union campaign. You may work it, but when it's time to, uh, as they say in the Marvel comics, when it's time to suit up, when it's time to unite, all of them come for that one. Wednesday they marched against Yulin of America, the entire union, security, uh, housekeeping, cleaners, you name it. They all came to parking lot attendance. They all came together to fight against Yulin. They all sent a message. And they were out there probably about 5,000 strong. Shake, shook the crap out of Yulin. Uh, Port Authority and state police, everybody was out there. That's, what, that's, that's the kind of demonstration you got to bring. The more people, the stronger the message. And for you people that are not supporting your Union and the efforts they're doing on the job. If nothing get happen, you only got one person to blame, and that's yourself because you were not there. At, at the end of the day is what have I done? Not what Joe or Jim or my union in general. What have I done to make this happen? The union is a collective, is one person that is standing with the collective of people. Now, this is not about the union. The union is in this fight. This is about the worker. Please push that Healthy Terminal Act. Get on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat. I don't do Snapchat. Facebook, talk about it. Videotape. Some of y'all guys like to be on videotape talking about some of everything. Talk about something of substance. 
get a, get on video and go to the Healthy Terminal Act webpage or Facebook group and say, I support it and I'm going to work to get other people to support it. These people need your help. Again, bad enough they're paying extra money just to come to work. Bad enough that there's no laws pushing companies to hire older workers into full-time position and stop having more part-time and full-time. They do that for a reason because they don't want to pay benefits. Got to put the pressure on them to, <coughs> you know, eliminate that. Got too many people working part-time. The reason Trump, the economy, Trump economy numbers are so low is because we got too many people working one, two, three jobs and too many people working part-time jobs when we need more people working full-time jobs. Now, on to this last one. This one is personal to me. My former company, Global Contact Services, look them out, up. They're down in um, Salisbury, uh, North Carolina. I personally got involved with that effort. I was on the negotiating committee. We negotiated our first contract. As you know, the first contract is not going to be pleasing to you or everybody. You got to start somewhere. Second contract should be a whole lot better. Now, unfortunately, the company got extended seven. I heard they wanted 10. MTA, Metro Transit Authority, only Metropolitan Transit Authority, only gave them seven. Seven is too long. If it was to me, they'll be out of here. And you should stay open when it comes to their contract, MTA. Well, they go back into negotiating a new contract. In New York City, $15.60 is not enough to do jack. And that company is not going to pay any more than $15.60. I don't care if you've been working there 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years. They're not going to pay you more than that. They're not offering you decent benefit. You're paying more in the health care than they pay him. Now, mind you, the city, the state of New York is like almost one signature away from health care, whereas no cost health care. But our so-called love people, pro-progressive uh, governor haven't signed the bill. He promised that if we can get rid of the IDC, which is an organization that he allowed to come and play, which is a bunch of Republicans and Democrats, if we can get rid of him, he'll sign the bill. Because they were blocking. They were stopping that bill from getting into the hands of Governor Cuomo. Yeah, the IDC was blocking health care for people who need health care. So a lot of people died by them letting this bill sit at the assembly. Now, the IDC is gone. There's no reason why Cuomo have not signed that bill. None. He could do it today. He can do it right now as we speak. But he's too much a punk suck up. Trying to suck up to these corporations that he won't do it. <clears throat> Yet people are dying every day because of it. And if he does do that, it'll allow companies to free up money that they're normally spending into health care because, of course, they have to put in, by law, they have to put in the health care and you have to put in the health care. It's a two-way street. That would eliminate them any obligations to put in the health care. It will free up funds that the company normally invests in you getting health care, even when you don't get it. They still have to allot it to the side. But with health care being passed, if the governor sign it, and he should, and you guys can put the pressure on him to get it done, it will free up spending for that company where they don't have to worry about paying into a health care system no more. That's extra money can go to pay raises. Because they can't say they don't have the money. Now, going back to this campaign of mine, um, this company is... It's, it's supposed to be a city job. And it was a city job. It was a good city job. 
decent money, decent benefit, all the overtime you can get, union friendly. And then the city of New York allows some jack leg punk behind company come in. Yeah, and I know the CEO personally, he be watching. And I know you wa probably watching this too, Mr. A. Their practices are horrendous. And I try to not, I try not to make it personal. But it's kind of hard to really believe somebody who claims to be a Christian that are not doing what he can to uplift working people. One thing I know, when people got healed by Jesus, and I don't need to make need, need I'm not trying to make this religious, they didn't have to give them money for it. And it is it was his will that they prosper. This company it does hire full time. It is nowhere near Yulin. Yulin is horrible. One thing I say about GCS, they do give vacation. In their policy, they give you increased vacation by the year. So the longer you're there, the more vacation time you get. Problem they have is they make you wait to make decision on whether you, what day you can give it. In other words, you put in for it at a certain time frame, but they take their sweet time telling you, yeah, no, it's approved. That need to be changed. The company is in charge of scheduling, so they determine who gets the overtime and who don't get the overtime. That need to be changed. They're not going to come up off of 1560. That need to be changed. If you're going to be here another seven years, there need to be increases another, another seven years. They don't ha offer um, child care uh, reimbursement when some companies actually have daycare in the facility. They don't offer health care benefits. Uh, they offer health care benefits, but they don't have a place where you can work out. So there's no lifestyle services at the company. I've seen companies, they got all that and they make it easier for the worker. So going in this um, new contract, they're probably going to be a new team. The originators of the first team are not there. I'm not there. Esther's not there. Uh, Judy is still there. Miss Lynn's going to be there. Uh, a couple other people are not there. I'm doing whatever I can to make myself available. I'm putting it out there. Tony Otano, if you're watching this, president of TWU, I'm available. I, I, I can do as much as I can. Part, very, very part time. But let me tell you something, it'll be to your interest to put me on full time. I don't mind this. One thing I know I'm capable of doing is I can bring energy to that campaign, I bring ideas to that campaign, and I bring momentum to that campaign. See, the people there the leadership team there at GCS from TW works at GCS. Me, I'll take a page from, I would suggest take a page from other unions. They actually either hire people off the job and put them in the field or bring in new organizers on the field to help with that campaign. In other words, if we can't take these people off the job um, throughout the whole negotiation process, Still pay them, but pay them for organizing outside the job to do great things on the job. So this is what I'm saying. I'm available morning, afternoon, late night, not too late, to be at GCS. I don't have to be on the seventh floor, eighth floor, like I used to do with other campaigns. I could meet workers at the restaurant. I could talk to workers outside the restaurant. I could talk to workers at a hotel uh, in the lobby. It doesn't matter. What has to happen if I really believe that if this next contract is going to be a successful, one of the things we need to develop, and I'm quite sure this probably came up, but from my experience, is there need to be a platform to run on. 
No great campaign achieved its success without a great platform. That platform, as you already know, is the major needs of the workers on that workforce. I hear people talking about, we need the union to do the scheduling. That should be on the platform. Seniority need to be on the platform. All this stuff, more pay. Right now, honestly speaking, I know this sounds crazy, but to me, nobody working for a city organization, contracted or not, should be making less than 20 bucks an hour. And if you want to increase it, 25 for the next four years. That's a dollar increase, right? The workers, they're going to need a platform to run on. So we need to have a platform to mobilize the workers. The workers recognize the platform. The workers sign off for the platform, include name, number, and social media information so we can connect with them through social media. There need to be a small media campaign coming in. I got a camera. I got software where I do videos. I can do a media campaign. I can sit with the workers, hear their story, hear their background, and put it on video. Put it on the GCS at YouTube Facebook group, which I created. Now, I didn't create the Facebook group, but I ran it. But the YouTube channel, I created that channel for GCS because we needed the workers to know when a new video was coming up, when a new message was going to come out right away. Instant access to communication versus me taking a list that you gave me and trying to call everybody on that list. <laughs> That's a lot of work. And half the time, people ain't going to pick up the phone. But you send a message to all the workers at GCS through YouTube hits everybody's phone if they hit the notification bell. So these things that I'm experiencing, I'm experiencing social media um, um, campaigning. I'm experienced on working on the field. I, I could be out there motivating and working, getting these people together, um, doing my best to get them on one page, on one accord, doing whatever I can to assist Judy, to assist uh, Miss Lennon. So basically what I'm saying um, on this show is I'm going to prove myself to be a person who not only asks people from the community to support these campaigns, but I'm going to, I will show you that I'm willing to support campaign. I, I, I don't mind. I was doing this for free. I, I mean, I would like to get paid for it. Don't get me wrong. I got bills like everybody else. I got to eat. But it's not about the money all the time. It's about what's right. And I believe what, what, what I personally believe there need to be people on the field that's familiar, at least one person on the field familiar with GCS. You'll have two, the president of GCS at TWU, that's Sandra Lennon, and you will have me, two people who are not tied to GCS out at GCS working the field pushing the platform, getting people to sign off with that platform, getting people to connect to the social media account, pushing people to attend events, delegations, doing stories by video, talking from the heart, explaining why they need this platform to come to pass, what it would do for their family, things like that. That is so important, and that's why I want in. Yeah, I want in. Honestly speaking, I don't like the way, I don't like the business practices of this comp company. I hate it with a passion. And I don't want nobody else going through this. I want to try to get some kind of control, some kind of lockdown on these practices. And I know it's going to take majority of the people willing to apply the pressure to the company for change. And that's why I believe I come in. Miss Lennon is there. I will be there. And Judy and them are working from the inside. Now, I believe people who got a heart for it, passion for it, and have strategies and have a mindset to win should be compensated for it. And I'm making myself available for it. So if you see this video, and if it's not Tony Otano, the president, and it's somebody else watching this video, get this over to him. 
because I'm making myself available to work with you guys, at least throughout the whole entire campaign. I'm not trying to take nobody's job, <laughs> you know, but I hate this company with a passion. I hate his big business practice. I love all people. So I have, I, I, I mean, I don't like how the owner of the company handle business. I really loathe it. But I believe that I have some ideas. I believe I have the heart. I believe I have the strategy. I believe I have the passion to really motivate these workers to be behind this new contract negotiation. Literally behind. Now, this is just what I believe in my heart. And hopefully you'll believe that and have me on the team. Oh, just to see their face, man. You know, now look, I'm going to get at them anyway, whether you hire me or not. I'm going to always be going for the juggler of GCS or any company that crap on their workers. Any, it doesn't matter. If I hear about you, this camera and me, we're coming after you. And I don't have that much power, but the only thing I can hope is I can mobilize the community to go with me when it comes to coming at you until you change your ways concerning your workers. You can call me the workforce police chief, whatever. I just want people to live good, decent lives. I don't like to see people get ran over and treated like trash and treated like numbers. You hear me unions? Treat your workers like numbers instead of treating them like people. You'll never reach your numbers treating your workers like numbers. Performance-based jobs oftentimes backfire and hurts the company more than health. You gotta create a culture that, that produces success. A happy environment, stress-free, healthy. And that's the mission of unions, to provide whatever these workers need so they can have a healthy, productive, stress-free life. Free life. But it starts with getting to know them, their heart, not the numbers. Anyway, I'm done. <clears throat> so um, let me go over what I just covered, pass and review. Airport workers are paying to actually go to work. They have to pay for Port Authority anywhere from $7 going in, $7 coming out to $40 a month to go, into, go on the air train to get to work. Some people can't afford that, so they bypass and go the freeway to work, which is a extra long hour, almost an hour bus ride. Once they get off the train, I'll bus ride another 10 minutes on the air train. That's not fair to them. So laws need to be changed, and we the people need to put pressure on Port Authority and uh, see do what we can to get them to change their ways and push them to allow these workers to have the same badge that Port Authority, TSA, Customs have where they can get in free. Now the airport do give discount for food, good enough. <laughs> but you shouldn't be paying to get into work. Number two, the law should be enforced to make sure every company that provide a uniform is paying these workers to get their uniforms clean. And if somebody's not paying their workers to get their uniform clean, you need to pull their contract. Shame on them. We need the Health Eternal Act to get passed because these workers can get sick easy from diseases coming from other countries. And then they're taking that stuff back home to their kids or their, their, their spouses. It's not fair. We need to provide health care for these people um, with the Healthy Terminal Act. And another thing, there should be more full-time jobs at the airport than part-time. Shame on, on a company that work their workers 20 hours a week when a lot of them be traveling from, from the Bronx, Staten Island, all that to get the work. Some of them go from Westchester County to Nassau County. Nassau County a little bit closer to JFK, but that's costly. And then my personal gripe. Oh, 
and support the PTO, 10 day PTO time. That's 10 days that every worker in New York City will have access to 10 days of anything they want, whether they need an extra sick day, they probably sick and tired of looking at their boss and just want to stay home, or I mean, or they want to use it for vacation or go see grandma or whatever at the hospital. They get 10 personal days. Be at those events, be at the rallies, be at the um brief um, press conferences, be at the marches, whatever. Be there to help push this. When somebody storm into the um, congressman office, you need to be the one opening the door. And last but not least, Tony Otano, what's up? I'm open. I'm free. There's a lot I can do and a lot I want to do. I want to be a thorn in the side of GCS. Why? Not just because I got a personal gripe with them. It's because I really care about those workers. Always did and always will. And I believe I can add something to the table in that campaign. And I don't want to I don't want to be sitting off at the sidelines doing something else, knowing I can really help that campaign, knowing that I can help motivate and inspire these workers, knowing I can get them to participate in certain events, and, and, and knowing we can set this up nice where they can have a real, real good second contract with more pay, more holidays, more vacation time, union control scheduling, the whole nine yards. Well, anyway, I'm done. Thank you for watching Union Power. If you got a, if you're part of a union and you have an agenda that you want to push, give me an opportunity to explain it to the people and see if we can get them to give you that push. You can always support the channel uh, through my PayPal. The information is down below. Um, I don't do this for that, but I always want to leave it open that, you know, I'm a one man operation. I'm not, nobody's paying me to do this. Um, I do this not for the pay. Uh, I do this because my, of my heart. Uh, but I always want to leave it open where people can donate to the channel. Uh, you can do it through paypal.me forward slash Bob TV NYC uh, or um, cash, dot, uh, cash app dot me, whatever it is, forward slash dollar sign Bob TV, all caps, all caps. Remember that all caps and that's direct support. You become a month, monthly patron, um, $5 or more, and you'll get access to some of my other shows that I do. Uh, as if you can handle it uh, for $5 a month. Uh, you know, right now we're looking um, to get, right now we got over 10,000 subscribers. We can get 1,000 subscribers to donate $5 a month to the channel. That'll be great. Uh, but uh, that's all on you. I'm going to do this regardless. Why? Because I love working people and I want to see working people advance. Nobody should be working 40 hours plus and not get their basic needs taken care of. 40 hours is all you should be all you need. Like back in the sixties and seventies, all you needed was 40 hours of work and that got you a house, sometimes two cars. The spouse stayed at home and work. I mean, stayed at home and took care of the family. Food on the table, clothes on the back, family fun time, vacation. Nowadays, people got to work two, three jobs just to get that, and that's sad. And the way it was done is because we have stopped mobilizing as a community to push back on these legislators that's allowing these things to happen. Now, I'm going to do whatever I can to push back. Hope you do whatever you can to push back on Robert Brown. Union Power, I'll let you later.